I wish I had known that this too shall pass. Yeah. Mm. You feel bad right now? You feel pissed mm. off? You feel angry? Yes, this too shall pass. Oh, great. You feel great? You feel like you know all the answers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like that everybody yeah. finally gets you oh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, there you are? Yeah. This, this too shall <laughs> pass. Time is your ally. Mm. And if nothing else, just wait. Just wait. Just oh. wait it out. Early American Naval Commander John Paul Jones said, if fear is cultivated, it will become stronger. If faith is cultivated, it will achieve mastery. Fear is whispered in our ears and shouted in our faces. Faith must be fostered by the man or woman you see every day in the mirror. The former forever snaps at our heels and our synapses and delays our course. The latter can spur our boot heels to be wandering, stimulate our creativity, and drive us forward. Fear or faith, which will be our master. Three men found that they could no longer sleep because of their deep-seated fears. This is a story I'm telling. Their lives were in a state of stasis because of their constant worries. So they set out on a pilgrimage to find a wise man who lived high in the mountain, so high up above the tree line that no vegetation grew, no animals lived, not even insects could be found so high up in the mountains in that thin air. And when they reached his cave, the first of the three said, help me wise man, for my fear has crippled me. What is your fear? Said, asked the wise man. I fear death, said the pilgrim. I wonder when it is going to come for me. Ah, death, said the wise man. Let me take away this fear, my friend. Death will not come to call until you are ready for its embrace. Know that, and you fear will go away. Well, this combat pilgrim's mind, and he feared death no longer. The wise man turned to the second pilgrim and said, what is it you fear, my friend? I fear my new neighbors, said the second pilgrim. They are strangers who observe holy days different than mine. They have way too many kids, and they play music that sounds like noise. Ah, strangers, said the wise man. I will take away this fear, my friend. Return to your home and make a cake for your new neighbors. Bring toys to their children. Join them in their songs and learn their ways. And you will become familiar with these neighbors and your fear will go away. Well, the second man saw the wisdom in these simple instructions and knew he would no longer fear the family who were his neighbors. The wise man turned to the last pilgrim and asked of his fear. Oh, wise man, I fear spiders. When I try to sleep at night, I imagine spiders dropping from the ceiling and crawling upon my flesh, and I cannot rest. Ah, spiders, said the wise man. No shit, why do you think I live way up here? <laughs> Your career as human beings is to stand on the fulcrum between fear and faith. Fear at your back, faith in front of you. Which way will you lean? Which way will you move? If you're as old as 29, you you have a different set of, of chops and, and perspective. You have a different, believe it or not, wisdom than you did when you were 24. And I think about every five years, uh, I went through some sort of process of re-examining where I was in life, you know, as a man, as well as an actor. So it's a never ending process, I think, of examining where you are uh, in life as a human being uh, and then transposing that so it's gonna be reflected in your work somehow. You learn something every time out. Oh, yeah, without question. Sometimes you learn what not to do, in all honesty, you know. A mistake not to make, but uh, what shortcuts you can't take. Is anything missing in terms of when you look at, you know, the, the sort of craft of acting that you wish you had, you know? Oh, well, it's always a battle against self-consciousness. It's hard to get past the realization that you're pretending to be somebody and people are looking at you, even if it's the crew. I wish I'd had more basic things, and more tools. I wish I'd gone through more classes. I wish I had been forced to take a dance class. I wish I had forced to get up and sing in front of people. I wish yeah. I had taken like, my, I wish I'd gone to that kind of like performance school 
in which you have to get past the self-consciousness of not being able to do it well and still having to do it. You need to hear the most important message thus far in the third millennium. It's not a statement, it's, but it's a request. It's not a bit of advice, but it's, it's a plea. In fact, it's a single four-letter word, help. Help, and you will make a huge impact on the life of the street, the town, the country, and our planet. If only one out of four of each hundred of you choose to help on any given day, in any given cause, incredible things will happen in the world you live in. Help publicly, help privately, help in your actions by recycling and conserving and protecting, but help also in your attitude. Help make sense where sense has gone missing. Help bring reason and respect to discourse and debate. Help science to solve and faith to soothe. Help law bring justice until justice is commonplace. Help and you will abolish apathy, the void which is so quickly filled by ignorance and evil. Your duty is to help without ceasing. The art you create can glorify it. The science you pursue can prove its value. The law you practice can pass on its benefits. The faith you embrace will make it the earthly manifestation of your God. So do it. Make peace where it is precious. Help plant trees. Help embrace diversity and celebrate differences. In other words, help solve every problem we face. Help and we will save the world.